Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly for you of this little guy. This is the CRKT Crossbones. Cricket Crossbones. Um, interesting little piece here. Gotta pop out a little tiny bit of thread locker there from the looks of it. Move that over there. This one has um, been on my radar roughly forever. Um, my, my buddy Frankie over at Frankie and Bird, Bird Shot of IV channel. Um, they, they, she loves hers. I think Bird likes it too. I got a chance to handle the uh, the, the actual like mid-tech version of it uh, from, I want to say Jeff Park. I know it's Park is the last name, but, you know, I don't remember the first one necessarily. But anyways, and, uh, you know, that, that, that was cool. But uh, finally, my buddy Charles gave me a really good excuse to pick one up. So uh, thank you for that. All righty. Now let's pop this loose. Come on, pop. There we go. And we're popping, we're popping, and we're locking. Okay, that was dangerous. But that's okay. Whoa, IKBS. Guys, danger, danger, danger. I did not notice this little insignia right here. That indicates IKBS. Loose freaking bearings. And reflective liners. God, this is just full of freaking danger. Whoa, okay. So, what this indicates is a couple of things immediately. <laughs> Holy cow. Um, first off, this indicates that I'm very glad that I'm using a mat with a lip all around it, because that will help to keep these balls from rolling off everywhere. It also indicates that this is just turned into a longer disassembly than I thought it was going to be. As a matter of fact, I thought to myself, um, oh, well, you know, I, I just finished my disassembly of the Quiet Carry IQ here. Like, well, well, I've got everything on the table. Let's just hammer out the cross bones disassembly real quick yeah that, good i good idea <clears throat> yeah well um we are uh, here to here to stay though so uh pull up a cup of coffee and we will uh we'll we'll we'll, we'll work through this one together so um a couple of other notes on this guy. You can see here, liners, aside from being relatively polished, nice, um, are uh, pretty unremarkable. Actual metal of some variety backspacer here. Um, got yourself a liner lock going on, no problem. The um, grease that they're using for the IKBS appears to be something serious or another. Um, but I think it'll probably run a little better after we uh, we get that cleaned out a little bit. So um, now, at this point in time, these areas are basically clean. And this is, by the way, factory freaking fresh. Uh, triple F, if you will. And so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start with the, the DIKBSing of the world here. Okay, so... Um, IKBS, Icomacorth bearing system. This is these kinds of loose little tiny bearings here. My goal for this process, and I've done IKBS disassemblies before, they are um, honestly not that hard. They're just time consuming and they're different. Like if you walk into it not expecting it, like some not a brilliant men we know, um, then even when it clearly labels it as such on the blade, although Cricket uses that same insignia for captive systems too. But anyways, IKBS is a, a fine little system, um, and it's really the only difference here between cleaning one of these guys out and um, a regular, you know, captive bearing system where the bearings are ensconced in a metal or plastic washer um, is just the amount of time it takes uh, and the amount of care, because instead of working item by item, or I'm sorry, just dropping in the entire thing of washers, you are working washer by washer. As a matter of fact, I need to grab some tweezers real quick. This will make my life substantially easier as I go through to grab the very last of the balls, so to speak, and pop that loose. Beautiful. Alrighty, so there's that. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is kind of keep the balls separated. <laughs> oh, welcome to innuendo country, population you. Um, we are going to try and lift and separate these guys right quick here. Um, and the reason for that is that every IKBS tends to... the the. Basically, it wants to have a certain number on either side um, of balls, that is, and so you want to kind of maintain that number. Um, is it crucial? No, not at all. Um, but it is also the case that only a certain number of the balls will fit on one side or the other at a given moment, and so it's probably not a bad idea 
to uh, do that. So uh, I am just right now using my finger basically to run, rotate these balls around here on a, a little piece of paper, or a paper, little piece of um, cotton cloth cleaning swatch thing. Um, got a whole video on my disassembly tools so you can figure out where to get these, etc. Um, and just trying to remove whatever grease is on there. And so, uh, the goal here being to get those reasonably cleaned up so I can reapply a grease that I like slightly more. So now I've put those kind of off to the side there. Um, that way I can move to the other side and pop these guys off. So let's go ahead and do that. At this point in time, it's a little less crucial because I have all of the other side's balls <laughs> off in a corner someplace. Um... So I just need to get them out of this blade area so I can go through and clean this out. God, this grease is awful. I'm going to grab a new swatch of cloth. The thing to remember, though, is that these little balls like to attach to things. Um, they, they, they will go everywhere given the choice. And so it's the case that you will be chasing these guys around. They will stay attached to the tools that you're using, etc. Um, and so... Keep that in mind as you're doing this. Uh, a big part of your life has just become controlling the motion of these tiny little balls all over the place. <laughs> um, because, yeah, that's... And so that's kind of the trick here, is making sure that all the balls don't migrate away as you're doing this disassembly. Cleaning this little uh, track out a little bit here. Um, it's probably not crucial, but I just... I don't want to mix lubricants, and I... I I have a desire to use a different lubrication here. That said, the lubrication that you choose, and for, sorry for those of you folks who've seen an IKBS disassembly a million times, you know a lot of this, but the choice of lubrication actually, and the, the presence of it is crucial here. Um, because uh, the lubrication is the, is the thing that keeps these balls in position as you are positioning everything else, as you're reassembling the knife. So you can't just kind of run this guy dry. I mean, maybe you could if you had incredible you know, dexterity and whatnot, but you, frankly, you shouldn't. Uh, there's not a good reason to do so. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the whole situation right there. Uh, I, and that's also why I recommend, uh, that you go into this knowing what you're doing, because you can put back together a regular knife relatively dry, but an IKBS one, you're going to need to have some materials present. Okay, I think that's all of them. I don't think I've got any hitchhikers. Check this groove, check the center area. Looks good. All right, now again, I'm just cleaning these guys off here. You know, well, I've probably said this before, but IKBS is something that strikes fear into the hearts of many knife owners just because it is a fiddly process here. I mean, fundamentally, you are having to control many little things. And, you know, there are other versions like this. There is the uh, Shirogorov MRBS system, which has this, the SRBS, uh, whatever it is. A similar approach. Who else runs non-captive bearings? Uh, I know there's somebody else out there. Um, practically speaking, I don't actually think it wins you anything, at least as a final, as the end user of the pocket knife. I'm just making sure that I'm not losing any... Any balls in this whole little area here. Um, but now we can go ahead and start the reassembly process. <coughs> but anyways, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, it strikes fear into the hearts of many. Oh, it doesn't win you anything. That's right. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the big deal there. Okay, next step here is going to be to start re uh, putting the balls back into positioning here. And so I know that I need to put this uh, this line down first. I'll need to kind of drop the knife in with this side down first in order to start this restart this process. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, we'll go ahead and grab the little uh, group of balls for that side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, rather than using a thicker grease, I'm actually going to use some of this. This is 10 weight nano oil. You could use the 85 weight here, and in fact, I don't think, I mean, it might even, uh, the reason I use the 10 weight is because it's a little less viscous, and so the actions tend to be a little quicker. Um, I don't know for sure, uh, you know, whether there are long-term consequences to using something a little less viscous. Makes the reassembly slightly trickier, maybe, by a small margin. But honestly, both of them would work fine 
I'm just using the 10 because I do like that really quick action. And in this case, I am really flooding that area here. I am just flooding that groove with oil. Um, and my goal for doing so is, again, to give those balls someplace with a surface tension of the oil. And I'm dipping my little tool here in that oil. Ay, 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 guys, uh, and gals for that matter, my deepest apologies. And um, then just kind of sliding these into position here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see with a little bit more detail. Uh, when I dip the tool in the oil, then the oil itself acts as, uses its surface tension to help grab some of those little balls. And I just lost one into that little area here. There it is. Come on. There we go. And so sometimes, you know, all you really need to do is just touch with the end of this. And I'm using a watch spring bar tool for this process at the moment. But when you've got things kind of right, all you're doing is using the oil to pick the little tiny ball up. And then sometimes you can get through it at a time, but whatever. Well, usually you do, I guess. Um, and then just dropping it back into place here. There comes a certain point, though, where you start to run out of room in the groove. Uh, and so you have to kind of reposition everything and rotate them around. And there are always going to be little gaps. It's not the case that it's kind of wall-to-wall -wall balls, so to speak. Oi, oi, oi. Um, no, I, in fact, you're going to see exactly what you see here. There's this little hole here. Um, and that's just so that there is, uh, it's easier to reinstall that way. And the other thing you're going to notice is that with this oil in place, I can actually rotate this a little bit and the balls don't fall out. Okay, he says as the balls fall out. Um, and so I'm going to be careful as I'm doing this, but it's not like, oh my God, dangerous right now. What I am, however, going to do is take this guy and I'm going to feed it in from the top. So that way, uh, very carefully that is, that way all the balls are now resting against something and kind of kept into position here. So right here, we have entered the danger zone. Da, 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 um, because uh, a couple of things are now possible. A, it's possible if I lift this off the table substantially that the balls on the other side could start to come loose. The other thing that's a little bit more of a pain in the neck if it happens is that I could drop some of the balls into the pivot itself in the middle there. That's not a great approach either. So at this point, I want to be even more careful than I was previously. As I start dropping, I want to be super careful. And then I proceed to drop the balls right into that area there. But there I can fish them right back out again. But it's just a question of a little bit of patience, a little bit of care. You can do this at home. You may not want to. I barely want to. But at the same time, there's a zen to it. I'm not being a brilliant man there by moving it over the pivot. I should really be, you know, just like any time you're doing anything, you know, uh, be careful with what could, could drop onto. All right, there we go. Now, at this point, I am actually going to start rotating the balls out of the way so that I have a lesser distance to go. The other place you don't want to drop these balls into is your detent ball hole, because that'll be a pain to get it out of. Got a two for there. Come on. And now we check. Just kind of looking for an open, looking for vacancies. It's like taking a road trip. And now, because I don't want to rotate this too much, I'm actually using the camera right here to show me whether there are any of these guys around. Okay. So now I'm going to put a little bit of uh, oil on the detent ball path here, this area. Okay, I'm going to completely drown it with oil because I'm using this applicator. Now I'm going to drop in the stop pin, which goes here. I'm actually going to use the tweezers to do that just because the problem is once all these guys are in position, it's very easy. There we go. Stop pin is in position now. Now what we can do is, do I have any other parts? At this point, what we want to do is a ball check. 
Um, I know from both of these sides here that, that I am pretty much full up, uh, that I have all the balls I need, um, because uh, there were not huge gaps in the groove. And the thing is, if you lose one or two balls, it's not a big deal. That's that's okay. Um, much like the rest of humans, you can get along fine with just one or two. That's not true, actually. Um, but uh, you, you want way more than one or two. But if you lose a couple, it's not going to hurt you too bad. Um, there we go. Uh, so everything should now be popped into position. To get out of the danger zone, I want to hold this down here, and actually I'm going to use the side of my hand here to keep pressure down on that, and now I'm going to hold the pivot, and I'm going to try and keep this on camera, but there's a dexterity thing here. Um, again, what to be an octopus would be a wonderful thing as a gear reviewer. If you ever get an octopus with a YouTube channel doing gear review, I'm just, I'm, I'm closing up shop. It's just like, buddy, you win. All right, there we go. My God, octopi is watchmakers. I mean, the lack of opposable thumbs would get to them, I think, after a while. But at the same time, okay. Popping up the um, lock bar now will give me a chance to tighten things down a little further, and I have over-tightened that, that's for sure. But I want to be erring on the side of not freaking going anywhere right now. And I got a little Loctite on my knife, whatever, that's okay. I'm going to use that as a precision Loctite applicator. All right, drop this into place. Um, and I have arranged these screws such that I remember which one goes where off camera there and of course that's going to be a pain in my neck and it's probably going to be a t6 pain in my neck let's rotate this around so i have better access are you t6 you are t6 he's talking to his screwdrivers and ranting about octopi as gear reviewers guys i i sometimes I wonder what the algorithm that automatically transcribes YouTube videos thinks about me. In addition to questions like, where is that jackass from? Uh, as well as, you know, just in general. Like, I, if AI starts in the YouTube transcription algorithm, um, I feel like I'm going to have a pretty big mark on my back. You know, what, what with Skynet and whatnot. Like, they will find me and send a nuke specifically here. Sorry, I've just been re-watching the tr tr uh, Terminator movies. Okay, that's way too freaking tight. Oh, my God. Okay, um, so everything is now put back into place, um, but I have over-tightened this pivot by a substantial margin. I am going to take a moment, though, to... Sorry, hit this... Um, uh, to make sure that everything is sort of properly aligned. And it seems to be. It doesn't appear that there are, you know, balls out between the line is causing trouble. So, oh, yeah! Whoa, Nelly. That lock stick is a thing. Oh, CRKT. Hashtag 100% lockup. But unfortunately, that lock stick was a thing even prior to my doing this disassembly. And I'm not able to really help that particularly. What I am going to do about it, though, is uh, use a little bit of Sharpie here and just apply it to the face of the lock here. That tends to make that a little bit less of a concern. Yeah, and I'll give it one more go. But anyways, we are basically, the, the action is now in a much better situation. The lockup is still what CRKT gave us, uh, which is... Not excellent, but a thing. So yeah, lock stick is definitely calming down. I'm going to give one more go here. There we go. There we go. See, you hear that lock stick going away? That's nice. It's not nice that it ever happened to start with, but you know what? I can live with that. And so you just kind of keep reapplying from time to time, and it works out. Okay, well, there you go. Um, that was a surprise IKBS session. Um, maybe it shouldn't have surprised me. Maybe I'm just not a brilliant man, but we worked through it. 
um, and you're going to want to make sure that this uh, that this you, you take that a little bit more carefully. I just happen to be ready for it, but that's uh, yeah, that's the situation. Oh, make check for play. Yeah, we're good to go. And the action is a lot quicker. Maybe not a lot quicker, but it's quicker. It's nice. Can't argue with it. There you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, that you enjoyed watching me play with a bunch of balls, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. And YouTube algorithm, please spare me when the time comes. Have a good one. Bye now.